Okay, welcome to my cabin. So today, as you can see, we're talking cast iron. Um, here I am in Lisbon, Ohio. Um, this is the cabin that I built a few years back. Um, if over the last few years, there's still some things that need done. If you have, if you're not familiar with my channel and you would like to see some of those videos, go check out the other videos. There's videos of building the fireplace and setting rafters and things. When I shot those videos, the intention was not a YouTube channel, so they're not all complete. Give me some grace there because, you know, I was sharing them with my Facebook friends and I really didn't want to build a YouTube channel, um, but a couple people had asked me to please put that on YouTube too so they can share it with family and friends. So, so that's what I did. But today, anyway, we are talking cast iron. So I have got a collection of cast iron here that has been building up at this place forever. And I'm talking years and years and years before I ever dreamed of building a log cabin. I have a back kitchen and a lot of these cast iron skillets and, and kettles were, they were all seasoned at one point in time, but because they hang out there in what I call my back kitchen where it's exposed to the weather and there's no heat and there's no air conditioning and they, the moisture content tends to attack that seasoning and remove it. And for example, like, like this one here, I, this is a good Wagner skillet. I think I found it and, and that's another thing. Most of this stuff, I didn't pay a penny for it. There are a few here that I might pay $5 for if they were unique. Like there's a there's an apple down here that I picked up a couple weeks ago. Um, other than that, most of these things came from friends and family. And these are the two we're going to work on today. Um, but anyway, like this one was seasoned at one point in time, but you can see that it's got almost like a like a mold in there because it's been hanging out back for six or eight years because this is my set that I use. I live alone. I don't need this many cast iron skillets, you know, cleaned up in perfect condition. So from really big to really small, um, my uh, waffle iron that I use and a couple things here that I use. Other than that, most of this out here just hangs up for decorations in different places of the house. That what I call the back kitchen. Um, I rarely do any cooking back there anymore that I'm up here. Um, so today we're gonna clean up a couple. Anyway, so let me, let's first off, let's, let's get rid of the things that are already seasoned that belong on the wall back here. These are the ones that when I'm cooking here, whether it's for a lot of people or for myself, these are the ones I grab. These are the ones I keep seasoned all the time. We're gonna work on a couple of those ones today and I'm, I'm just gonna use the fireplace to season them. I'm not using an oven. We can use an oven, but I think with me, I try to take everything back to the way it was. So if they were cooking in the, the fireplace, they were seasoning their cast iron in the fireplace. So I'm gonna clean up these two here, this one, and this one, we're laying at my sister's house, um, just in a breezeway, and I was like, what are you doing with those? And she said, take them, I don't want them. So, they were given to me, um, and I would like to shoot a video just cleaning these up. They're not in bad shape, they're not near as bad as some of the ones that have had, you know, moisture laying against them. So, I'm just going to clean them up, we're going to season them in the third place go from there. So anyway, let's get rid of these. This is my, this is by far my favorite. I use this one all the time. Anytime I'm cooking breakfast for a bunch of people, that's my go-to right there. Okay, so for today, we are primarily going to focus on these two. So, I'm going to use this iron kettle. I don't want to scuff my kitchen table up, but I don't want to bust my lamp either. And this thing is extremely heavy. Because they're not real bad, I'm just going to use a scrunchie that somebody made for me. And this is a piece of drywall sandpaper. Really abrasive. So if there's anything that's stuck in there real good, I'll be able to get it off with it. So I'll just throw that in the water too. So. 
Let's see, coffee, gotta have coffee. It's early morning. Um, the weather here has been 85, 90 during the day, but in the morning it's like 50, 55. So we're in the early morning right now. I've got a fire burning, the door open behind you, you really can't see it, but because of that monster, when it gets burning, it sucks all of the heat out of the house. So by opening the door and burning a fire, it actually got colder in here than it was beforehand. So that's why I chose this morning to do this because in another hour or two, I definitely don't want fire burning in here. Okay, here we go. Let's get these cleaned up a little bit. So basically I'm just gonna try to scrub off as much of the surface rust as I can get off of here. And it should come off pretty easy. And you can see the, the color of the water that's starting to come out of there is pretty dirty, so it's coming off. drywall sandpaper is like, I mean, it's like using a grinder almost. It definitely takes her down quick. pretty good. I've still got a little bit I want to get off right down here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm just going to dry it out and then sit it on that fire and heat it up and try to get any moisture that's in there cleaned out. And then also once it starts to dry out, I'll be able to see if there's some place I might want to work on a little bit more. And it looks like there might be a little bit here, but let's try it out and find out. So I'm just going to throw it on the fire, let it warm up a little bit, and then we'll see how it looks. Okay, I just want to get that dried out now. And it won't take but just a couple seconds. You'll see it dry out pretty quick. And then it's time to get down close and personal. Get myself a little teeny chair. And something we can work on so you can see what I'm doing. I'm not gonna let it get too hot. It's almost dry now. But I think it's plenty hot enough that it'll dry out. and dry. Now, all I want to do is put a thin layer of fat in there. Now, I use vegetable oil. I use lard, which is what I'm using today. Um, the, the important thing is there's nothing on this right now. And you don't want to rush this. You don't want to put a whole lot on there. You just want to get a thin layer in there and get it baked in place. So basically, I'm just going to take my hand and I'm just going to rub this on there. That's still a little bit warmer than I thought it would be. And trust me, this is way more than I need right now. If you try to bake it on there with that much in there, it will just get all sticky and tacky in there. So let's let it soak in a second. For the sake of this video, I'm not going to do the back side right now. I'm just going to use my rag and just get rid of a little bit of that. 
other thing you can do is just dump it off as it heats up. If I do them in my gas oven, I like to actually put them in upside down so that as it heats up, it actually runs out. Now you just want to put that on the fire and basically overheat it. Um, you want to get it to the place that it bakes that that oil on there, that lard on there. It's gonna understanding what it does is what it when you're seasoning a skillet. What you're doing is you're taking that. Of course, it's a solid at room temperature, and then when you heat it up a little bit, it goes liquid. But now we want to transfer it back to a solid again. We want to evaporate out all of the. My log is blowing a pretty good fire there. Um, we want to evaporate out all of the liquids that's in the oil and we want to turn it back to a pure carbon so that it leaves a layer of fat in there that has turned to carbon. It's putting a layer of oil on there that so that now oxygen can never get to the metal to rust the metal. Your food doesn't stick to the metal because it doesn't touch the metal. Um, so that's basically what we're doing. You know, it's going to take, it'll probably take five, this is a really hot fire because it's wood, but it'll take five or 10 minutes each time I do this. And I probably will put a different layer on this thing. I'll let this one go for a little while and, and then I'll cool off the pan a little bit and hit it again. And I'll probably put upwards of five or six layers on there before I try to cook an egg in it. Um, and the eggs are by far the test because if you don't have it seasoned properly, the eggs will definitely stick to it. So, okay, it's only been probably five or ten minutes, but you can see the center of the skillet is starting to smoke and it's starting to look dry right there in the middle that's because it's burning out all of the liquids that's in that oil so i'm not going to let it get way overheated but that's exactly what you want to see happen you want to see it starting to dry out and start to smoke like this so you can tell that now that smoke is going that direction so i'm just going to rotate this pan a little bit and kind of work that around the outside edge. And as soon as this is done, as soon as I get this whole skillet to look like that, then we're gonna do it again. And we're just gonna keep doing that until we build up a nice layer on there that is somewhat, somewhat shiny after it gets on quite a few layers. So anyway, I'm gonna keep turning my pan I'll let you stick around for a little bit um, just to watch it working and that's basically what you want you just want to get that to look dry it's just burning out the liquid that's in there take it off of the heat lay it down here the only problem is it has to cool way down it has to cool way down before I'm going to be able to put another layer on that. But I decided not to let it cool off too much. So I'm just not going to touch it. That's all. I'm just going to put a little bit more lard in it. And just paint it around in there. And then I'll just dump off the excess instead of wiping it out. on just a little thicker than I did last time. Not a lot, just a hair. Stay back. That's pretty good. And then we're just going to heat it up again. Come here, baby. This is lavender while I'm working. Sit down, baby. Go, girl. She's a lady. She is. I, she made some of my videos early. Um, and then when I was building the tiny house, she made it in there. 
She is the best little girl. She is the best little girl in the whole world. There's no one better than her, huh? Well, unless unless it's your puppy. Then if it's your puppy, it's probably better, but she's my baby. She's my baby, huh? We do everything together. We go see grandma together. We take mama to work and we go pick up mama. Uh, my daughter, this, this is my daughter's dog. Lavender's my daughter's dog. So I'm grandpa and Emily, my daughter, is mama. So we asked mama for permission to do everything, huh? Right there, sit, lay down, go girl, go girl. You can see the pan smoking really good. So I wanna keep it like that but I kind of don't want it to go too, too fast. So I can move it off the heat a little bit, let it let it cool down just a little bit, but yet sort of let it do its thing. It's starting to, it's starting to show dry there again, which is good. That's what you want it to do. Um, and then you just keep on doing this, just keep repeating it until you get a nice layer build up on there. I don't know if any of you have ever seen skillets that people use for 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 years without without redoing this. I mean, if you just keep up with it, you don't have to do it. But on the outside edge where you're not really doing any cooking, you're cooking primarily in the center, it'll get a layer built up this thick. And basically that's just another layer of oil that got left on there and got baked on there again the next time. So, you know, I've had a couple people bring them to me and ask me to help them clean them off. So I'll have to take a wire wheel or sometimes even a, a light grinder to them and grind them off. You know, when I built this fireplace, and again, there's videos of watching me build most of it, at least this part of it. Um, this is exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to step back, step back in life, step back in time, even back before my time, and just wake up. This is a this is a Thursday morning. I had to think for a second what morning it was. This is a Thursday morning, and. While most people are out running the rat race, I'm sitting by a fire, um, throwing some oil on a cast iron skillet and, and showing you guys what I'm doing. Um, but even if I wasn't showing you guys what I was doing, there would probably be a little fire here. Um, and I would most likely be sipping on a cup of coffee and just enjoying the morning. So I think I think that's the reason I did it, is to, one, live the simple life myself, but then two, to help show people somewhat of, you know, we call it the simple life back then, but there was nothing simple about it. Everything was difficult. But we weren't in the rat race. We weren't competing with the Joneses. Um, we were just living our life day to day. And that's kind of what I want to do here. I kind of want to um, get as far away from that rat race as I can. Um, live simple, need less money, um, cook my meals on a simple piece of firewood in a fireplace, and just enjoy life. Because, you know, myself, I'm 50 years old. 50 years old. And I was talking to someone last night about it. At best, I'm halfway, and that's if I make it to 100. So each day is precious. Each day is precious. Enjoy it. Step back if you have to, but, but understand that, that time is our most valuable asset. So spend it wisely. If it's a cup of coffee and a little fire burning, um, do it. You know, and I built all of this with my own two hands. And that's something that no one can ever take from me. You know, when I sit down here on this hearth by this fire and I throw some oil on a pan or I throw an egg in a skillet, it's that satisfaction that knowing that I did it. You know, I built this, I built this cabin. When I come home at night, I did it. And I just, there's a sense of satisfaction knowing that that with your own two hands, you did something. That... So there you go, that is almost ready. Trust me, at the end of this video, I'm putting an egg in there because I'm not gonna shoot this video and not show you that, that this is the way I do it or that it will work for you. So anyway, I hope you're enjoying the video. Stick around, I know my videos are long. It is what it is. Some people stick around and watch the whole thing and some don't. It's okay. Again, I'm doing this 
to help teach people just a simpler way of life. And, and the simpler way is not always the easy way. Yeah, definitely. Definitely need to get rid of that. Okay, here we go. Let's give it another layer. It's baking on there really nice. It's still smoking just a little bit, but you can see it's starting to hold that glossiness now. It's not so dry looking at the end. So it, it's baked on there pretty well though. If I pick it up with that, I am gonna get burnt. Because it's wet. Lavender. Stop. It's actually starting to cook it on there even before I put it back on the fire. Now I definitely have too much in there so I need to get rid of a little bit of this. Sometimes what I'll do even in my oven over there is just flip it upside down. Heck while I got it upside down I might as well add a little bit to the bottom of that. Get the other side in a little bit. Okay. And repeat. So I'm just gonna let it go there for a while. Um, I'm gonna shut you off and I'll check back shortly. Quit. Got another layer in there, and I'm just kind of just kind of working it around. I don't want to touch me, that's for sure. This is the reason all of your modern cast iron skillets are really textured. Like they're kind of bumpy. <laughs> and that's because the oil sticks to it better. They can put on a thicker layer all at one time. Where with these really smooth ones, the older ones, you can only put on a little bit at a time. You have so it's repeated. Um, production in a sense so because they can season them all at one time they can put a layer on them push them out the door and 
they can season them hanging up where they're they just goes quick where these ones have to be done in layers in order to get a nice build up and and even those ones when i buy them brand new typically i'll put more on them because there's not enough anyway but almost everything i have here is really old anyway it's pretty good i've got the excess all wiped out of it i'm just going to put it back on the heat for a while so every time i cook in this thing too or any of the other ones which i don't even know if i'll use this one i'm just kind of doing it for a video to show you but every time i cook when i'm done cooking i wipe them out with cold water dry them out really fast put them back on the heat if it looks like it needs a little bit of oil i'll drop a little bit in it and and just leave it on the fire until it starts to smoke pretty good and then pull it off and what that does it just continues to keep that layer of seasoning on there so okay it is looking really nice you can see that it's got a nice shine to it you can see where the oil has left that dry spot at the beginning but we don't care about that at all change a little bit in time just put a log on there so this would be a good time you could see as the smoke's rolling out a little bit this would be a good time to talk about what draft is so because it's 70 degrees outside draft is the difference between flu temperature and outside temperature so when you get a day like today where it's not really super cold it's hard even to get the best built chimneys to draft completely so my smoke is is almost it's almost rolling into the room and until i got it burning a little bit it did start to puff out just a little bit it never does this in the winter time but because the temperature outside is starting to rise it makes it more difficult for a fireplace to draft upward anyway just a real quick chimney lesson you're fine this is definitely going to be my last definitely going to be my last layer so remember at the beginning of the video we started out with basically these two were together my sister had them both so we started out with this and what we now have is that so you can definitely see there's a huge difference all the the rust is gone and it's got a nice layer built up on it we're going to find out in just a second just how good that layer is Those are store-bought eggs and they're a little thin, but you can see you can move it around. It didn't stick at all. Myself, my preference, love this crunchy outside egg. Little salt. Little pepper. I can't hit the egg because the draft on the fireplace is blowing my pepper towards back. I'm not a huge fan of pepper anyway, so just in case my mom sees this because she never peppers my eggs. Anyway, that is good enough for me. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm going to get this emptied out and cleaned out. So when I clean it out, basically it's just rinsing it out. Um, I don't use any soap on my pans. That's a sin. I don't use I don't use any soap I don't want the pan to stay wet so I'll empty out the oil wipe it out throw it back on the heat this time in the future I might use some cold water in there and then throw it back on the heat but not this time because it's not that seasoning isn't set in there as good as I'd like it to be so I'll wait a couple times and then 
and then I'll then I might use a little water, but if I if I don't have to, I don't. I'm not afraid of even the little egg material being left in there. It ain't gonna hurt a thing. All right, so I just dumped out that oil, and basically. For me, that's clean. That's no water. There is nothing on that thing that's gonna hurt you. Nothing can survive that heat. So that's it. And that's the way I've done all my stuff forever. Even if I'm cooking potatoes in there, wipe it out, get it ready for the next time. And, and you're ready to go.